Okay, well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name's Peter Kilcoy, and I'm the ILT Director at uh, Worcester College of Technology. And I'm going to be talking today about um, how we're implementing blended learning across the whole college um, over the last year and next year. Um, so in this presentation, I'm going to be giving you a, a bit of background information about how and why we're doing this, uh, talking about the kind of support structures that we've put in place, um, how we're de developing blended learning, how we're delivering it, and showing you some examples of what we call PAL packs. And PAL packs are the kind of units of our blended learning. Our tutors are creating these packs. PAL stands for nothing to do with dog food. It's uh, personally accountable learning packs. And what's happening uh, at the moment is tutors are creating these packs that students are accessing outside lesson time. Uh, and that's our, the, the basic model. So a bit of background first. Um, unfortunately, um, this is very much driven by the present economic situation and uh, the funding cuts that we're all facing. And uh, when our senior managers did the sums, they worked out that the college couldn't possibly continue to, to function the way that it had been functioning in terms of guided learning hours and teaching hours. And we had to reduce um, our course teaching hours by roughly 15% across the college. And so lecturers were told, and I'm sure you can imagine how thrilled they were, that um, their lecturing hours would be cut by 15% and that they would then have to deliver 15% of their courses online through PAL packs with no extra time, no extra money, just they've got to do it. Uh, I was very popular when I uh, went out and told people, as I can tell you. Um, some of the, the sort of more positive reasons behind uh, why we're doing this is it's about um, learners being able to get more involved in taking ownership of learning and I think that's a very important um, skill for 16 to 18 year olds to pick up and we've certainly found that uh, many of our school leavers don't really have strong independent learning skills and so by having to learn in this way it's helping them develop that um, and you know, I think in the, the modern age, being an independent learner, being able to manage your own learning, being able to be responsible for your own learning are all crucial skills because with the world changing so quickly, you know, we're all having to learn new things all the time. You know, so there's no sort of you learn something and that's it, you do it for the rest of your life. And uh, we felt this was also an opportunity to, to drive up uh, quality and um, get more differentiation and personalisation into the curriculum as well. So what are PAL packs? Well, I'm going to get um, Sarah Palin to uh, tell you a little bit about this uh, now. Do any of you know ex Extra Normal? Any of you familiar with Extra Normal? Hands up you are. All right, this is, uh, we, we, we actually use Extra Normal a lot um, with our PAL packs. Um, a lot of the tutors make use of this. If you've not seen this before, it's a free site that um, allows you to... Tell me about PAL packs, Sarah. Welcome, PAL packs are a new way of delivering learning at Worcester College of Technology. Tutors are working with members of the ILT team and study center staff to build learning paths to support independent learning in study centers. Oh, it's exciting, Sarah. Well, Joe, you could say, by bringing together the skills of teachers and support staff alongside technology in study centers and the excellent resources available on the internet, this is true 21st century learning. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Joe. God bless America, and remember in 2013, vote for me, not that loser Obama. She only did it, I'd like to say that bit at the end. Um, so Extra Normal, if you've not used it before, it's a fantastic site. You can create, there's hundreds and hundreds of different characters and backgrounds. You just type in some words and the characters say the words. And our tutors are using these quite a lot to create nice scenarios in PAL packs. Right, so what are PAL packs? They are self-study packs that uh, contain resources for students to look at, read, watch, listen to. Uh, activities for them to do and assessments. So that's a basic sort of framework of what a PAL pack's like. And um, we try to design them to be personalised, to differentiate. So the differentiation we might achieve by you know, having students stuff to read for the more text-based learning, stuff for them to watch for the more visual, auditory learners, etc. Um, we try to make them as active as possible. So it's not just a matter of students just reading through stuff, watching stuff, that they also have to do activities where they have to process the information that they've, uh, they've been reading about or watching, etc. And we also try to make them as engaging as possible because 
the Facebook generation, bless them, don't have the greatest attention spans, and if they start getting bored, they're sitting in front of a computer, they'll soon drift off onto other things. So what resources do we have to support Palpax? Um, I'm lucky enough, and I think it's quite unusual in a college these days, that I'm, I'm not the only ILT person. I actually have a team of four ILT developers working with me, all sort of excellent, well-skilled, innovative people who are supporting um, the teachers in creating these packs. Um, we also at Worcester College Technology have um, about 15 study centres. These are rooms from about this size to much larger sort of libraries. We have one of our libraries is a study centre, stuffed full of computers, laptops, um, books that have been, we don't have a library anymore, all the books have been devolved to the different study centres. Study centres are related to different curriculum areas, so we've got a sports one, a hospitality one, travel and tourism, etc. Um, and the study centres are staffed by study centre assistants, and again they work to support the teachers in creating power packs and finding them resources to go in their power packs. And the actual PAL sessions are timetabled normally into the study centres, and so these study centre assistants will support the students in the, the doing of the packs. So, what were the challenges to actually getting this going? Um, Firstly, um, as I'm sure you're all familiar with, in any college you can have a wide range of staff ILT skills, from people who are very good, very innovative, need very little support, can do great stuff, down to people who you know, really hardly know how to, to click a mouse and you know, are very unconfident in their, their use of ILT. And so when all staff are having to develop these packs, particularly supporting and training of the staff who are less confident has been a big challenge. The tutors are given no time to do this at all. So they're having to do this, as it were, in their DD time. And uh, that, in terms of the impact on them, you know, it really didn't go down very well when this was announced, uh, when the principal announced this last year, that this is how we're going to be doing things from now on. Um, and there was a lot of initial resistance uh, from staff in getting involved in this. Um, the union kind of were very strongly against it. Um, and um, that really made it quite hard to get the process up and running. But I think, you know, over time, people kind of realised, you know, it isn't great, but it's do this, or we're not going to have to run the courses. And, you know, slowly people came on board. And now, I've, while I, I wouldn't still say staff are thrilled about it, we've got pretty much sort of total buy-in that staff know they've got to do it, and they are creating these packs. It, it, you know, I find it very difficult personally because I've been working in ILT. I used to work at RSC um, before I was at the college. I've been in ILT since the late 90s. And one of the things I've always been saying is it's not about saving money. It's not about you know, costing jobs. And sadly, unfortunately, now it is about both of those things to a degree. And that, to me, is not a particularly comfortable place to find myself in. But you know, the way I look at it is this is the only way we can continue to provide good quality education for the students and if we don't do this they'll just be having that cut in hours and nothing on top. So what's the process? Uh, firstly um, we've had to put on an awful lot of CPD for staff in terms of training people you know, what does a PAL pack look like, how to build them, how to use the tools in Moodle, how to find content, how to assemble meaningful learning activities. Uh, once we've done that, the course teams have an awful lot of freedom about how they do it. So um, they have to choose which 15% of the curriculum they're going to deliver this way. So it may be that they decide that certain modules are particularly well suited to PAL packs, and so they would deliver maybe all or most of those modules through PAL packs. It may be they choose, right, let's just split it across the whole course, 15% of each module or it can be some sort of mix in between. That's very much down to course teams to decide how to do this. Uh, the course teams decide who's going to, how to allocate the work, how to allocate the support of the packs, um, etc. Um, and the PAL packs are written by the course teams with the support of my staff in terms of helping them sort of think about how they can use the tools in Moodle to create activities, to create assessment, etc. And with a study centre team who largely work in supporting them find resources to go in the packs. 
So, um, the structure of a power pack, we, we recommend the structure, and I'll, I'll be showing you some power packs later on so you can see the sorts of uh, the way that different power packs look. But we recommend that a, a power pack should start off with some instructions. And in fact, that's where extra normal comes in a lot. And a lot of the staff have been using extra normal to deliver the instructions with the idea that students are much more likely to watch a cartoon and focus on that and listen to those instructions than they are to read some text telling what, how, what to do. Um, there should be some learning objectives so the students and importantly the study centre staff who are supporting that PAL pack know what is going to be learned during the session. Then some content. Now we've done a big push on finding ways that um, staff can um, save time so they haven't got to create lots of content themselves so we we've done a lot of training on finding uh, open educational resources a, a sort of thing that was uh, mentioned in the keynote this morning there's a lot of great free material out there and so staff don't have to reinvent material they don't have to write their own material often you know, if you look at all these great repositories out there you can find some content to use as a basis of your um, packs we're making use of the NLN materials. Any of you still use the NLN materials much? Um, th yeah, they, there's, th there's still some, some good stuff in there that's still you know, reasonably relevant, and these can work very well for self-study objects. Um, uh, a lot of use of video, particularly uh, embedded YouTube videos, and um, you know, Moodle, as you probably know, does a really nice job where you just paste a YouTube um, URL into Moodle and it pops up as an embedded video and uh, the truth is like that and then they can build activities where the students can watch a video and then maybe take part in a discussion on a forum or a quiz after that about the content of the video or about the content of the resources. Um, for the learning activities um, we encourage the use of the Moodle activity tools, the stuff on the right hand side when you turn editing on, on Moodle, the glossaries, the forums, journals, etc., um, to create activities. And it's kind of a bit like a sort of an updated version of a web quest, what we're doing here, where it's not just about watching, reading, it's about giving students active learning tasks to do with that information that they've been watching and reading. So they have to process that information, they have to think about that information, and that, you know, to me, is where the learning is going to be occurring. Um, all power packs should have some kind of assessment in them, and we use the Moodle assessment tools of quizzes and uh, assignments so that there can be some assessment so we can measure whether learning is taking place and the students have um, actually done some learning. And then we might use the... Uh, the choice tool uh, to um, evaluate the packs. So, uh, just going to show you a, a little uh, example of um, this is um, how our performing arts people in one of their PAL packs are using the journal tool. Um, so, the, the task that they've got to do is uh, they're working on Greek myths as one of their projects. Um, the tutor sets this kind of reflective task where they have to think about you know, the students get into groups and, and have to work on and perform a, a Greek tragedy um, what they did, how they contributed, what they learnt etc and um, sorry unfortunately the system here seems to require me to log on which I don't normally have to do So, so here's an example of um, some of these journal entries. So you see the students here are doing a kind of reflective diary where they're thinking about what they've done in the session, reflecting on it, writing on it, and then the tutors can view that and using the journal comment reply to that and um, evaluate how well the students have uh, reflected on. Yes? Yeah. Is that, um, does everyone do it in the same place, or does it change 
you know, the, the journal tool, um, as opposed to, say, the forum tool, uh, the only people who can see the journal are the tutor and the individual student. So it's kind of like a, a private conversation. Um, the, the, the tutor, I don't know if you saw, I clicked on view 20 journals, so they get it from there. So, the tutor, so it's, it's a great reflective tool, the journal tool, and, and one I would strongly recommend. Right, okay, I better speed up a bit now, then I've got five minutes left. So the delivery of power packs uh, normally takes place in study centres, and I've just got some pictures of our study centres so you can uh, see what these uh, rooms look like. So you see they're generally large rooms with, uh, see this one, we've got PCs against the wall and uh, wireless laptops that the students can use. Uh, so that's a small science study centre, and you see that we've still got the paper-based resources as well there, and these are some students working on power packs. Right, so I've got some examples of uh, power packs to show you now. Just come out of this again. So this is a, uh, a sports one, um, and this is a, a pack about um, injuries in sport and about how to react to an injury during a football match or something like that. So you see we've got the instructions, the learning objectives there. Um, very nice use of the glossary here, which is one of the reasons I wanted to show you this course. No doubt. Oh. And so what, what the glossary activity here is, is the students have to, um, as it were, build a virtual first aid kit as to what you would need in a first aid kit um, at a sports ground. So... Um, See the students uh, have added these entries. You can see which student has done them. Some pictures as well. And even a, a YouTube video, which I won't play now, on how to put on a disposable glove, which I'm sure is something that's uh, very useful. Um, this is uh, a PAL pack on uh, employment and trade unions. So you see here we've got some uh, instructions at the top, some uh, a video for the students to watch, some a fact sheet, some web links. Another video and then a quiz to, uh, to measure the learning. Um, this is a a public service um, PAL pack. Um, so this is about diet and here is an activity where the students have to um, create a balanced diet menu for members of the armed services and uh, there are students upload the work here and then the tutor grades and comments on that through the pack. Um, this is one on first aid and again you see lots of tasks, lots of active things for students to do. Um, uh, taking the idea of the first aid kit glossary which uh, I think has been quite influential in the college when people have seen it. Um, I guess just with something like Photoshop, um, we, we create, we've created a bank of icons which, you, which you know, like task to do some clocks, so you can say 10 minutes, 15 minutes, things like that, which people can then put into labels in Moodle. And those are quite important to help the students be directed. And uh, finally, um, here's a, a Understanding Child Development one. And this is an example of one where um, the tutor has created a, an extra normal video. Hello, my name is Mrs. Wheeler. Today we are going to explore children's development. If you are hoping to work with young children, it is very important for you to have an understanding of how children develop. This will help you to recognise when children are more advanced. So you get the general idea there. And then you see the pack, it looks at physical growth first with some uh, instructions and some resources for them to look at. Um, some YouTube videos looking at physical development, um, some web links, 
PowerPoint, some more YouTube videos, so uh, and uh, another actually normal thing and uh, an assessment task there. Okay. That's the end of the session. Thank you very much. Are there any questions for Peter in this house project? Yeah. There you go. Um, so how does it differ from asking the patients just to set up a room for a particular unit? So the difference is, what's the difference between the PALS and just an ordinary course? Um, this is in addition. So they will already have a course that they use to support what goes on in the classroom stuff, and the PAL packs are extra courses outside of that. Often there are, yeah. So often we'll have like a gateway course that links them to all the different PAL packs um, on a particular course. And then they have a time frame which they have to do with the PAL Yes, yes. So there'll be timetabled normally, so it'll be this PAL pack this week and another one next week. Some PAL packs might last for several weeks if it's a big one. That's about if it's timetables and puts into a scheme of work. Um, yes, the, the course teams, because we give them a fair amount of freedom, the ones that are doing it best have kind of like a pal pack scheme of work that they give out to the students so they know exactly which pack they're going to be doing, when they do it, when it starts, when it finishes, etc. Great. Are there any other questions? No? Oh, there's one at the back. So the question is about time and, and how your staff goes over staff it. Or the teaching staff. Mm. Yeah. How do teaching staff find the time to, to develop these? It's it's very challenging. Um, uh, they they do it in their DD time and, and it does increase their working week and it's 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 not it's not an ideal situation. There is no, we have no money to pay for any additional time. You know, we're making staff redundant. Uh, things, are, things are very tough. Okay. Thank you very much, Peter. Okay, so our final presentation this afternoon is Anne Dickinson from the University of Coventry, and you're going to be talking about induction into Moodle. <laughs> Have a change in technology here. 